Right, I'm just going to make a quick comment on uh, instruction number 10 in the marks adapter and it talks about is the uh, lay shaft uh, end float and the uh, shim thickness the difficulty with actually working that out once you put the kit in is that because we don't push the lay shaft or the rear lay shaft bearing on um, we've got no way to actually do the measurement because we only do it once we do the install so the only way around it is to actually put the bearing on check uh, the end float take the bearing off and then reinstall it with the appropriate shim the instruction or the, the workshop manual uh, talks about is that once the uh, lay shaft's in you measure this distance here, distance A between the uh, front of the case which is across here and um, the bearing and that then works out the, uh, the shim thickness but because we don't have the uh, the bearing fitted on on the back of the lay shaft, we can't actually do this measurement with the straight edge to the front of the case. Uh, as I say, anyway, install the bearing, measure, take the bearing off, and then go back to following the rest of the instructions. Just a comment. Okay, well, page four, five, and six. So we're now up to the input shaft, so it uh, talks about removing the, um, the bearing and the spacer from the circuit from the uh, input shaft. That's point 13. And basically, because we've got new bearings, we're going to be doing that. So there's our spacer. Our new input shaft. There's our old input shaft, which has got the roll bearings in. Okay. So it's a matter of fitting the new bearing, the spacer. In the circuit. There's our new bearing. In this case, it says I said before, it's an NSK. So I'll just go over and press this in. I'll not do that off camera. Just press in a bearing on a gear. Okay, so now I'm going to wrestle and try and get this um, circlip off the old one. Okay, so there's our new front input shaft. I've already put the uh, Welsh plug in and I've already put the uh, Welsh plug in and sealed that up. A bit of uh, Loctite. Right, so where we're up to now is up to um, number 17. So it's to fit the uh, new lay shaft in the front of the transmission housing. And check for the clearance and grind away required for a minimum uh, clearance of one millimeter. So in this case, is uh, we get get into the front of the case. Uh, and we have to shift the forks are over this side, and you'll understand which part of the case we're into here. So we're just going to put the um, lay shaft in, and we're going to check for clearance around this area. And obviously, the the impact's going to be this uh, uh, threaded threaded area for the bolt, and the picture, uh, picture below, let's bring it up a bit, just shows shows that that uh, space again. Right, to um, measure this clearance here, or if it is, does require clearance, 
Uh, again, the instructions are a little bit um, silent on exactly how to do it. It just says check the clearance. So if you looked at the picture, if you go and setting it up like this, then you'd have to try and fit the case together uh, with the selectors in, select the gear, listen for any rubbing. Um, it just didn't make sense because then you, the other problem is because you don't have this rear bearing on, you'd have to push the case together, um, force that in, or not force it, but push that into the bearing, into the rear lay bearing that's already in the case. Then you'd have to try and dismantle the whole thing, which is hard. Otherwise, take the bearing out and fit it dry. I don't know, it'll all flop about. So, I think the solution is what I've done here is I've set the um, the dog onto the uh, the gear. I put the um, shaft into its appropriate slot, so it only it sits uh, fairly secure, doesn't wobble around. Put the selector fork on, and now I've looked at the back. Now, obviously, for the um, for the selector to be on, that'll be that'll be off, and for it to be on. The select uh, the selector ring would be up against the uh, the new low gear, and that would then visually see. Although you've got a bit of movement in the fork, it's only it's only very slight, and it, that's all it should be should be tight. So we're checking now into this back corner here for clearance. So I'll just uh, zoom in and wobble the camera a bit, maybe. And you can see in this section here now, in the top corner, it does require some clearance. So that's going to be my method to um, check the clearance. Right, so the uh, last part we're at, we uh, made the clearance for the uh, selector fork on the low range gear. Uh, so we're now up to this stage here, although it's on this page, it uh, relates to now uh, the next next instructions, number 21. So it's fit the selector fork, selector shafts, the forks and the drive ring, as seen in the photo above, which is that photo there. So I've just got it resting up. I'll just uh, put the lay shaft in. I'll put the input bearing, or the input uh, shaft in. Uh, I've fitted the needle bearings into the front. I'll just temporarily... Just put the front cover on. Um, I think that might have to come on off again, just so I can drive the uh, lay shaft into its rear bearing. We'll see how we go. But this is how the instructions state. Uh, I'm just going to put some oil onto the needle bearings. And we're going to put some oil into the front bearing. too much oil into the um, selector shaft because it will just come running out the holes. Right, in relation to uh, the silicon sealant, um, both Mark's instructions state to use the three bond uh, and also the factory manual states to use the three bond, uh, the three bond one, two, three, and that's what you need to get in uh, Victoria uh, or Australia. You get it from Repco; they stock it. So the next step is is to do the surfaces. As I say, these have all been cleaned with um, acetone. So. Okay, so I've uh, applied the sealant to the uh, flange. I actually haven't put very much on because there was very little on there. They're very uh, tight fits, so hopefully I didn't go too much. So the next part is is to fit the cases together. I'm just wondering which is the best way to do this now. I'm 
Okay, so I've got the selector forks lined up. Now I've just got to try and turn the input gear. Get it to mesh in. Okay, so I've got the two cases close enough together now where I think all I've got to do is now get that lay shaft in. And so I don't really, you can't see if it's lined up. Seems to be going together slowly. So it's I'm going to say it's together enough just at this moment just to put a bolt in. And the instructions aren't uh, totally clear, it just says bring the halves together. So I'm not tightening them up, I'm just using it just so it doesn't fall to bits on me. Just get that bearing. Okay, so we've got the two uh, parts of the case together. Now I'm just going to start putting some bolts in, just to see what goes. Right, the uh, torque setting for the uh, uh, centre case to the uh, front case is 26 to 36 uh, newton metres. So I'll just uh, 
chalk those ones up to start with. And we'll, we'll set initially to the 26. sure that this uh, this rear bearing still got to go in further Another three millimeters. Okay, so I've just uh, put some sealant on the front bearing retainer <laughs> and also just put some uh, just general purpose grease or just on the seal These are all uh, through the case, so I will put uh, silicon and uh, more well, silicon on them. Now in relation to um, the torque setting, there's two lots of torque settings, uh, one for the lay shaft uh, bearing side and one for the input um, retainer. The top retainer is uh, 16 to 21 newton metres, so that's uh, from there upwards, and the bottom are uh, 16 to 24, sorry, 19 to 24, so obviously a lot tighter on the bottom. Low range, neutral. High range, two wheel drive. Okay, so we now uh, refit uh, this uh, spring of the seat. The circlip. Let's see this going line across the uh, garage. 
never to be seen again. Cut off our cable tie we stuck on. apply a sealant. I've cleaned all the uh, flange. Right, so now we put the uh, oil cutter back in. And we get our speedo gear. Right, so we're now up to uh, putting the uh, rear cover back on. Put some um, oil on the bearings. And the next part is to reinstall our detents. So again, is uh, they need uh, silicon so we'll do a ball, a spring. Right, so we've uh, installed all the switches now, check balls uh, are all in the switches, the check balls are in the uh, selector rods, now it's time to start, what we've got left is to actually put the uh, drive flanges on. So the uh, front drive flange, I'll just put some, um, just some grease around the seal. Now the uh, front uh, drive flange nut is 226 to the glasses on 324 newton meters. So
Right, so we're ready to give the rear a try. I don't know how we're going to go, but uh, it's 294 to 451. And that's good because we're going to go up to 450 on this torque wrench. So we'll start off at uh, 310. Okay, I think that'll do us at 4.15. So, uh, it's uh, finished. And it's now ready to put it back into the car.